well, maybe the Higgs needs to be what the Higgs is because it helps set the magnitude for the elementary unit of action. Let's take two. Hopefully this footage will be a little bit better than the abysmal camel work that I did last week. All right, so where are we at? This is just a quick brief thing, but it's titled A Massive Coincidence because that's what I'm considering, a massive coincidence. You can look into it more if you want, but as of now, coincidence. What the heck am I talking about? While well, we're spending time and the clue that looks like that is discovered about the Planck mass potentially being the mass gap and very important, especially in the fine structure constant for our hyperbolic partition equation. So basically alpha is defined as elementary charge squared all over four pi h bar speed of light and the electric constant there. Okay, and that gives us alpha. Cool. So this is the elementary charge of either the electron or a proton. Uh, what the heck is this thing down at the bottom? That's a good question. When you actually look at what's down in the bottom of this, it actually comes out to be. So when we actually do that out, this term is squared here. So this term, when you actually write it all out, it gives you some, some number to the power of like 36, and it says no identifiable units. It's actually ends up being charge squared, which is interesting. So when we put all this in, we look for its root, it ends up being a Planck charge. That's pretty neat. And the reason why it's neat is because then we can simplify this thing here to elementary charge over Planck charge. And we square the whole thing. That also gives us alpha. I thought that was pretty neat. People have known about this. You see this around. I just think that that's a much more compact and personally, in my opinion, a little bit more beautiful notation and a bit easier to intuit than 4 pi times h bar times the speed of light times the electric constant, personally. So I took some of that intuition, played around with some numbers, and apparently there's a thing within physics and there's a number of interpretations of it uh, called the hierarchy problem. It's at least according to Sean Carroll and, oh my God, I forget, I'll, I'll put her name up here. They had a discussion. You mentioned the hierarchy problem. What is this? Yeah. Uh, that sounds like politics, not physics. I mean, uh, these days, kind of hard to disentangle, honestly. <laughs> yeah, so the hierarchy problem is something specific to understanding the mass of the Higgs boson, which is one of the bosons in the standard model. And the Higgs is the weirdest particle in the standard model by far. Mm. Um, it is the only particle that has the properties that it has. So like I said earlier, a lot of particles sit in three generations. The Higgs boson does not. The Higgs boson stands as a very weird outsider that um, you may have heard is responsible for giving particles mass. Um, and if you want to learn all about that, there's a beautiful book by Matt Strassler that you should definitely check out. Very good. Um, but the Higgs boson gives particles mass, um, has different what we'll call yeah intrinsic properties. Uh, it's called the spin in specific that doesn't match any other particle. And because of that, effectively, we think that the Higgs boson um, should have a mass 10 to the 18 times bigger than it does. <laughs> um, and so this is the hierarchy problem. And the hierarchy is just the mass scale that we expect and the mass scale that we see everything else sitting at. Um, and the fact that there's 10 to the 18 differences, I mean, really 10 to the 32, because it's squared and that's the real first principles number. The fact that something could be off by 32 orders of magnitude from our theoretical predictions, where did that come from, right? And they were talking about why are there 17 orders of magnitude? So 10 oh, minus 17 for notation, 10, oh, excuse me, 10 to the 17 orders of magnitude difference between the plane. Oh, no, I should write out negative 17 because you do the mass of the 
the pigs over the Planck mass, that's basically what you get, 17 orders of magnitude. Okay, I don't really know how to parse that. However, we rearranged it. So we did the Planck mass over the Higgs mass, and we square it, we get out a familiar magnitude. It's 1.05 times 10 to the uh, 34. I believe that's what, it, yep, first three digits. Okay, so for those that have been following, this is the first three digits, but it gives a familiar magnitude so that if you rewrite this as Planck mass over the mass of the Higgs going to Wolfram Alpha, and you can use either the uh, 0.11 or the 0.35 measurements, were the two most recent prominent measurements from Atlas and CMS. Oh, yes, thank you. It's kind of important. Yeah. And we multiply by h bar, it gives us approximately one joule second. Okay, what the heck does that mean? It's accurate for about three significant digits. However, when you actually look at some of the experimental measurements of the Higgs, we only really have about three significant digits. Right now, most of the measurements are going between approximately 124 and a half GeV. There's been some 126.5 GeV. Most of them right now, we have confidence it's about 125 GeV and then something. Okay, cool. So that got me to thinking that we have this construction and it's important for the charge boundary. Take an educated guess. What if it was supposed to be one? So I did the calculation. The calculation ends up being we do oh, Planck mass and you just solve for x kilograms squared, multiply by h bar, and you set it equal to one joule second. Great. What do we get? The answer we get is 2.23503. And that's using all the numbers uh, from CODATA recommended for the Planck mass. So that gives us an output of six digits here. And that was in we're searching for kilograms. And then multiply by C squared. Oh, yep. That's that would be an incredibly large Planck mass. However, it, oh, excuse me, Higgs mass. But it's greater than zero and less than infinity. That's apparently the important part. Times 10, negative 25 kilograms C squared. And that comes out to be approximately approximately. 125.37 GeV. Great. I mean, you can't really call that a prediction because there's already been measurements, literally a little bit below, a little bit above it. But it's an interesting coincidence. And at first level interpretation, beyond coincidence, it's like, well, maybe the Higgs needs to be what the Higgs is because it helps set the magnitude for the elementary unit of action. That's that. I mean, that's basically where I'm at right now. Um, the other thing that that had us try out and this might just be trivial just because we were using the defined versions for uh, or the solved versions for H bar and the Planck mass, but 
if we put it into one of the uh, constructions that's on our poster there, we get uh, so mass plank times the plank length squared over time, plank time, and this is just the initial version. Uh, this is for h bar. Is one plus. I had to look up how to write the zeta because I'm so used to typing it out. Z zeta of two, and that's oh, yeah. I'll put it on the video. Ja theta squared times our inversion boundary, and that's for h bar, but. To kind of test it a little bit it's like all right this construction has two plank masses two higgs masses we can go from h bar to we got three plank masses mass of the higgs squared and when we do this this comes out to be i'll say approximately because it's one joule second to 14 significant digits or nine or point nine 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 fourteen nine so it's interesting what does it all mean i don't know hopefully uh somebody out there or somebody watching in the future will be able to solve it later that's all i got Oh, you got to see?